The existence of the body diode necessitates using two FETs back to back when FETs are used for a battery switch. This lecture explains how a FET is constructed and operates and what the body diode is. You don't actually need to know this for my course, but my background is in chip design, so to me, silicon devices are fun. And also, understanding parasitic diodes can be really important for a PCB designer. In making a transistor, we start with crystalline silicon. To make an NFET, we first dope that silicon with positive charge carriers. This creates a P-type substrate or P-type well. Next, dope two areas with negative charge carriers to create the source and drain. We want to electrically control every active area, so we need a contact to the P-well. Then, we grow a thin layer of oxide, an insulator. This is the gate oxide. The gate is made of polysilicon, which means it's made of many crystals, unlike the substrate, which is grown as a single crystal. Lastly, metal traces connect to these four terminals. That's NFET manufacturing in a nutshell. Note that in reality, the proportions of this structure are not to scale vertically. The source and drain are what's labeled diffusion in the SCM photograph. The gate oxide is the faint light line below the gate. And the fat, light gray columns are metal contacts. Now let's talk about how we use the thing. Let's apply some voltages. Zero volts on the source and four volts on the drain. What happens? Nothing. We have some diodes, but no path where current might flow. In particular, notice that the drain substrate diode is reversed biased. It's blocking. It's off. Let's look at the P plus contact to the well next. What voltage shall we apply here? If we apply a positive voltage, we will forward bias the diode to the source. So we don't want to do that. We don't want an always on diode. We want to apply a voltage that will keep this diode turned off. Of the available voltages, that's zero volts. In every discrete NFET that I've seen, the source is connected to the well. In most on-chip NFETs, the source also is connected to the well, and the exceptions have special reasons. Lastly, let's look at the gate. To turn on the device, we need to do something with the gate, and what we do is apply a positive voltage. Consider what a positive voltage might do to positive charge carriers. Same charges repel. So the positive voltage on the gate will repel the positive charges in the P-well. Indeed, to turn on the FET, we apply such a large voltage that we cause what's called inversion. We push away so many positive charge carriers that we create a channel of negative charge carriers. Now, current can flow. Current flows from the drain at 4 volts through the inverted channel and to the source at 0 volts, all through n-type silicon. The NFET is on. Let's turn the FET off again by putting the gate at 0 volts. And let's go back to find the body diode. The body diode is one of those PN junctions that we're looking at here. Which one is it? The diode between the well contact and the source is not it. Remember, because it is shorted, it never conducts. It's like it's not there. That's why we shorted it. We've actually drawn this diode twice. They both go from the P-type material to the N-type source. The diode between the P-well and the end drain is our body diode. The body diode is an inherent part of the construction of a MOSFET. Lastly, let's see what the body diode does when we reverse the voltages on the source and the drain while keeping the gate at zero volts. Notice that we have four volts forward biasing the body diode. The body diode will conduct current will flow. Although we are applying the off voltage, zero volts, to the gate, the transistor conducts, current flows. The transistor cannot be turned off, cannot stop conducting, 
when the source voltage is a diode drop or more above the drain voltage.